All right, once more, thank you for joining today. We would like to get started with the webinar about the opportunities in the solar energy market in Bangladesh. So for today, we have uh, allocated 90 minutes and I briefly would like to go through the agenda with you. So first of all, I would like to introduce the speakers of today and uh, shortly introducing also why this uh, study has been conducted. Uh, following, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Sahat, who will provide some further insights about the uh, solar energy market in Bangladesh. Um, I will present uh, a brief background about the Dutch landscape in the solar industry. Um, and then we have two guest speakers from Bangladesh uh, who will provide their perspective on uh, both the private sector as well as the public sector developments. Um, and then we um, would like to allocate 10, 15 minutes for Q and A. Um, as mentioned already, kindly ask you to put yourself on mute. And if you would have any questions, you can put them in the chat box. We will address these during the Q and A session. Thank you. So, first of all, our speakers today. Um, I would like to give the floor uh, directly after to my uh, colleague Bas Blau who is the first secretary of the embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Dhaka. He will uh, shortly explain a bit about the background of this, uh, this study and also the uh, perspective from the embassy on um, the Dutch uh, uh, market and also the, uh, uh, the opportunities for Dutch companies in Bangladesh. Um, then my colleague Sahat will uh, provide a, uh, an overview of the solar energy sector in Bangladesh. Um, and then I will shortly explain a bit about the Dutch markets. Then we have uh, two speakers, as already mentioned. Uh, we are very keen to welcome uh, Mr. Munawar uh, Nisba Moin, who is the Managing Director of uh, Rahima Foos Renewable Energy. Um, he will provide some details on uh, his views on the, the private sector. Um, and we're also very glad that uh, Mr. Fazil Hock, uh, Director, uh, Deputy Secretary of the Sustainable Renewable Energy Development Authority, Shreda in Bangladesh, is joining us today. He will share some further views on uh, developments and, and policies uh, in Bangladesh on uh, renewable energies. So, first of all, uh, Mr. Bas Bla, I would like to give the floor to you um, on behalf of the Dutch Embassy in Dhaka. Bas, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias, and, and good morning to the Dutch participants and good afternoon to those uh, in Bangladesh. Um, first of all, thanks to Larif and Lightcastle for, for doing the study that we're discussing today. Um, we are very happy with the results so far, and uh, I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, what we can discuss. I'm excited to see, in particular, of course, Matthias and Zahed, who've been working very hard at uh, getting this done with their teams. Um, and also excited to meet virtually the other distinguished speakers that we hear from today, Mr. Munwar, Ms. Moin, and Mr. Fazl Hock. Um, for those of you uh, who don't know me, my name is Bas Blau. I'm the first secretary for uh, economic affairs and private sector development in Bangladesh. Um, for us, this study has been um, um, uh, a relatively long time in the making in the sense that we, uh, we have an aid to trade transition that's been ongoing for, for years now. Um, very often, we base ourselves on the experiences that we have in Bangladesh. So we look at the sectors where we've traditionally be, have been active, um, and that was mostly development cooperation. So agriculture, uh, water, the garment sector. Um, and I think since a year or two, three, we've been looking actively into sectors that are a little bit less familiar to us, um, and we will increasingly do so in the years to come. Um, that is something that we were driving as an embassy for the last years, but last summer, our, our uh, government also adopted a new policy um, for foreign trade and development cooperation. Um, and Bangladesh in that strategy was designated a combination country. And, and for me, that really, really reflected uh, some of the progress that we've seen in Bangladesh over the past years, uh, working up to the, the LDC graduation. Um, Bangladesh is now no longer in the group with, uh, with the lowest countries that only received development cooperation from the Netherlands, but really a, a, a country in transition with a formal status, with access to new instruments, new possibilities, and new examples, such as Colombia, Vietnam, South Africa, to compare itself with. Um, of course, when we start to implement such a policy or start thinking about what, 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 what we can do, um, 
we are always very much affected by the local context. And in the last uh, the last fall, of course, we saw as a as a consequence of um, 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 among other things, the uh, the aftermath of COVID and the uh, the, the Russian war of aggression in Ukraine, uh, an energy crisis that affected uh, most societies in the world. And in Bangladesh, we saw that uh, very clearly, um, not only on the consumer level, of course, but but uh, an energy crisis affects companies, affects the private sector, affects everything. Um, so we started thinking about what we can do to uh, to at least start understanding um, what what the problems are, where the solutions may lie. And also increasingly how we can not think in only development projects, but more in seeing if we can inform our own private sector, see what the Dutch uh, comparative advantage can be. And I think for solar energy, it's a, it's a very sort of gut feeling topic where people tend to say, okay, we can never compete with the manufacturing in, in other countries in the region. Uh, and that might be true, but of course, um, and I hope we can discuss that today as well. Um, I know we will. <laughs> Uh, is is where the Netherlands does have added advantage, and that is in you know the integrated solutions, uh, applying solar in particular ways that uh, um, that I think is innovative and that I think is um, is cost effective too. And for us as an embassy, we um, um, will look closely at the appetite uh, in the Dutch and Bangladeshi private sector. Um, traditionally, we are um, uh, a matchmaking platform. We want to connect you to uh, those parties that can help you do business. If you don't need us, that's also fine, of course, but uh, we, we intend to support this appetite and this interest. The support can be direct. So we could, um, um, with the right conditions, we can help design a project, uh, help companies with troubleshooting when they face issues. Uh, but we will also look into how we can support indirectly and more strategically. So how can we engage with uh, in a dialogue with the most important stakeholders to help Dutch companies understand the legal, the regulatory frameworks, and some of the challenges and opportunities that, that they might be able to find in Bangladesh. Um, so feel free to reach out to us um, either in the chat or in the discussion today, or also after the webinar uh, bilaterally with your questions to enter the Bangladeshi markets, and we will do our best to help you uh, connect to our network. Um, I'm very much looking forward to today's discussion, and, and I'll be here for the duration of the webinar for any questions that participants may have. So with that, I'll, I'll pass the mic back to Matthias. Um, thank you very much. Excellent, Bas, and uh, thank you for sharing your perspective. So um, uh, maybe to add uh, for the uh, for those joining us this morning, um, this study indeed originates from the fact that uh, Bangladesh is is fast growing uh, emerging market, uh, but highly dependent on uh, fossil fuels still date. Um, and there lies a both an opportunity, but also I would say a, a, a main uh, challenge uh, to uh, how to become more uh, more sustainable. Um, and, and the Netherlands uh, having a, a strong solar and renewable energy industry, um, I would say, could contribute also to uh, to uh, this this energy transition. Um, so uh, that is also one of the reasons that the embassy engaged La Riva and Light Castle to conduct the study. Shortly on the background of La Riva and Light Castle, uh, La Riva International, we are a Netherlands headquartered business development advisory firm, uh, which is supporting companies with entering expanding high growth markets in Asia and Central Eastern Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, for which we have established a, uh, a network of affiliated firms in 24 countries at current, including Bangladesh, where we are represented by uh, Light Castle, Partners, um, which is represented today by uh, Zahed, um, one of the directors of the, of the company. Um, and this study has been conducted uh, in the last quarter uh, of, of last year, starting in uh, November. Uh, we completed it uh, in February. Uh, I do believe Bas had it's also the, uh, the ambition of the embassy to distribute the results of this study via your channels. Uh, so uh, once formally uh, completed, uh, this will also be, uh, be publicly uh, published. Is that correct, Abbas? Certainly, yes. Excellent, excellent. All right, uh, let's get started. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we would like to uh, share uh, our observations uh, on the, the current situation in the Bangladeshi market and uh, where lie the opportunities and how the Dutch could tap into that. Uh, I will take on the, the latter parts. Uh, so as such, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Zahed. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mathias. Uh, good morning to everyone from the Netherlands and good afternoon uh, to our friends from Bangladesh. Uh, we will try to keep our presentation very brief uh, and we'll only be uh, focusing on the key points. Uh, for con While conducting this study, we actually approached uh, qualitative 
uh, methodology. We interviewed uh, value chain actors across the different value chains, starting from uh, the importers, EPCs, uh, regulators, and financial institutions and others. And we have tried to summarize our key findings from uh, those uh, discussions and interviews and also based on the secondary research that we had conducted. Uh, if you move on to the next slide. So as we know, Bangladesh has done uh, quite well over the last 10 years. Our growth uh, trajectory, the uh, overall average growth has been above 6%. However, uh, the COVID scenario and the Ukraine-Russia war has creates certain challenges for the economy. We are uh, we are facing some uh, structural challenges. However, our GDP growth has remained at a positive trajectory, which is quite unique in the in the region. And as we uh, have seen with the rising economic growth or the or the growth in our economy, we have seen that our electricity uh, production and consumption has have also increased uh, significantly. If you have, if you have a look at uh, the overall um, production capacity, you'll see that there has been a an increase of 204 uh, percent in in our installed capacity, uh, which has happened over the last 10 years. However, uh, due to certain challenges, our demand has not increased in tandem. We are in a we are in a positive, we are in a good shape because we have significant excess capacity of uh, electricity. And as we know, uh, the economy is expected to keep on growing according to multilateral development agencies like IMF and World Bank, which states that we would be growing at a significant pace in the coming years, and this would require us to. Uh, to, to consume this additional capacity of electricity. If you can move on to the, to the next slide, please. So if you look at uh, the, the, the mix, uh, if, you, if you have a look at the mix of, uh, of, of the sources for generating electricity, we'll find that uh, natural gas happens to be one of our CCGT-based power plants happen to be one of our mainstay in power generation. This is due to the fact that we, historically dependent on our domestic sources for natural gas. However, due to lack of uh, exploration of new uh, gas fields, we uh, and, and the government strategy of relying on LNG-based power, power sources, we had uh, started importing or increasing our import of, of, of LNG. Currently, we, we roughly import around 25% of our uh, gas demand. Apart from that, uh, we also uh, have certain dependence on uh, HFO-based or diesel-based power, power plants as well. Uh, we also import a certain percentage from India as well through, uh, uh, through uh, the wheeling facilities. Uh, alongside there, uh, there is 11% captive power which is being generated in different uh, factories, particularly garments factories. Uh, if you look at the, the renewable sector, we will see that uh, renewables account for less than 4% of our total generation mix, which is much lower than the government's target of attaining 10% generation within the year 2020. The government has direct plans of generating at least 30% of our energy within the year 2030 from renewable sources and 40% of our total energy generation from renewable sources uh, within the year 2040. In order for this to happen, uh, there, there has to be significant investments coming from the private sector because most of many of these uh, IPPs, independent power plants, uh, are financed by private sector investments and funding. If you can move on to the next slide, please. Uh, if you look at the the, the renewable or the, the solar energy market, we'll see that it's evenly divided across the on-grid and the off-grid systems. Uh, as we know, there are significant generations happening in the solar home systems, which are independent units predominantly uh, used in the rural areas. And others, there are on-grid systems, which are either uh, power plants, solar, solar parks, or these are captive uh, facilities or, or rooftop-based solar solar facilities in the in the manufacturing sectors. Uh, as we know, uh, there has been uh, a re recent change shift in the in our policies in 2018, leading to net metering system, leading uh, to better incentive mechanism for the manufacturers to to install solar home-based systems. And uh, as we uh, as I have mentioned before, solar remains one of our mainstays. It accounts for roughly 75% of our current generation, and we believe that solar-based uh, power generation will remain a, a mainstay for, for renewable sources. Uh, apart from, uh, apart from uh, this growth, there are certain developments which will lead to further increase in rooftop-based solar uh, generation. One thing would, uh, being uh, the RMG sector's shift towards green certificate building green factories, which entails having renewable sources for generating electricity. Alongside the government or the industry expects around 500 uh, factories, additional factories to become green factories within the year 2023, which is currently around 192. 
uh, which are LED uh, certified buildings. If you can move on to the next slide, please. Uh, if you look at the global picture, we, we all understand the, the existing challenges of relying on, on uh, import of, of fossil fuel, uh, just as you have seen due to rise of uh, LNGs. Uh, this has, has led to uh, globally, uh, also in within Bangladesh, a shift towards or a rethinking of how what role solar or renewable energy can play in order to ensure our energy security in a way. And Bangladesh being a signatory of multiple international treaty is duty bound to reduce carbon footprint, carbon, uh, carbon emission, which would, which would definitely lead to more focus on renewable sources, including solar. In terms of our policy imperative, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, the government has, has announced uh, increase in uh, renewable energy generation from 30 to 40 percent of our total energy generation within the year 2040 which is which is part of our uh, mujib sustainability plan which 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 got ratified recently alongside uh, the central bank has also set aside certain refinancing scheme which is called green financing to the tune of uh, 3.68 billion dollars which would also facilitate investments in those areas and uh, export oriented factories which includes uh, the ready made garments factories also get certain uh, taxation benefits to the tune of 2% tax incentive for, for moving towards uh, renewable uh, sources. Uh, in terms of investments, uh, we, uh, as we have seen over the last 10 years, the private sector has played a significant role in, in making the funds available for uh, these uh, partnerships. Alongside, uh, alongside, we have seen that uh, the generation over power generation from solar parks have increased significantly, although there were scope for, or there are scope for further improvement, but overall generation has increased to 261 megawatt in 2022 from three megawatt in 2017. And as, as I mentioned before, RMG sectors and a few uh, FMCG sectors are moving towards generating uh, generating uh, solar-based power in their, uh, in their factory premise. Next slide, please. If you look at the uh, the value chain for captive solar uh, so solar rooftops, uh, so we will see that uh, EPCs, as we know, play a, a dominant role in facilitating this transaction, starting from providing consultancy services to helping procure these equipments. Uh, there are two methodologies for 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 operations. One is the OPEX method, and another is the CAPEX method. Through the OPEX method, the investor uh, actually makes the investment. And sells the sells the generated electricity to the consumer, which includes the factories. And the factories uh, or the or the manufacturing operations actually get it at a discount, to, usually to the tune of twenty percent. For the capex model, the investment in this solar uh, facilities or the solar PV uh, system is made by the manufacturer, and they actually benefit uh, from this in terms of lower electricity charges. And as we know, uh, financing, uh, we will be talking a bit more about financing in the subsequent slides. Financing plays a major role. Uh, one main challenge that these companies, uh, these manufacturing operations face is the, is the cap in the financing limit. We will be talking a bit more details in the subsequent slides, but this is one of the main challenges. One of, another challenge is the lack of understanding of green financing among the financial institutions, which are entrusted with the disbursement of funds. So there might be interventions, opportunities on scope for, for increasing the capacity of these bankers who are, in, who are mainly entrusted with this disbursement or for, for deploying these funds uh, for, 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 for the shift in renewables. Next slide, please. Uh, if you look at the IPPs, uh, there are a number of uh, power plants uh, or, or solar parks which are in the pipeline. A couple of them have been launched. Uh, as I have mentioned, uh, uh, the, the growth in terms of, uh, of proliferation and growth of uh, solar parks have been, uh, have been quite slow, particularly due to a few reasons. One issue is definitely the lack of available lands. As we know, we need uh, lands which are non-agriculture in nature. Uh, Procurement of the land is, is considered to be a major problem uh, for, while setting up these uh, solar parks. Apart from that, there are, uh, there are certain challenges, uh, which entails uh, the streamlining of the PPA agreement. Although uh, there has been a lot of instances where the private sector has been working with the public sector, but there are certain areas where the PPA agreement can be streamlined, particularly for renewable-based uh, uh, solar parks. As I've mentioned, EPCs play a major role in facilitating these, uh, these turnkey projects. 
and they not only offer uh, consulting support and an equipment transfer, but also help with uh, access to financing as well, because they also help connect these uh, IPPs with, uh, with debt financing as well, if required. And we feel that there are medium term prospects. This is particularly due to the fact that there is a distinct lack of available lands for setting up these solar parks. Uh, if you have a look at the solar home system segment, this is predominantly uh, applicable for the rural segment. Uh, this previously used to be uh, one of the mechanisms for, for providing electricity for the off-grid uh, areas. However, due to higher penetration, the penetration electricity penetration rate is around 98 to 99%, which means that there is lesser demand for solar home systems, off-grid solar home systems. However, due to uh, due to large uh, large scale uh, um, uh, absence of electricity connection or load shedding in the rural areas to the tune of two to three hours, solar home systems can be a good backup uh, electricity power source for the rural areas. If you can move on to the next slide, please. If you have a look at the the, the policy uh, parameters, uh, based on the policies that have been enacted by the government, we have a renewable energy policy, which has been enacted in 2008, uh, net metering policy, which had been enacted in 2018. Uh, we understand that the government is, uh, is quite keen to promote, uh, promote renewable energy due to a few reasons. One part is our commitment to, to move away from fossil fuel, usage of fossil fuel. Another is to ensure stability because we are having to depend increasingly on imported fossil fuel which increasingly will become a huge problem due, due to geopolitical issues and also due to the fact that uh, we as a country are facing uh, foreign currency issues. So it's imperative that we move towards renewable sources, which will reduce our, uh, our uh, import requirements as well. Uh, as we have seen, uh, IPPs are going to become more important, but rooftop-based solar uh, will also become a very, very important part of our, of our renewable energy journey. Uh, apart from lands, a few other areas have been identified, which includes canals, lakes, and, and other water bodies, which can be used as a surface for, for, for developing the solar parks. These are being explored uh, based on our discussion with Shreda, we came to understand that this is something that is, that is being explored. However, it's still at the, at the testing phase, and we are hoping that maybe in a couple of years, or maybe in the next two to three years, this will also become uh, a viable means for, for, for facilitating this energy generation. Uh, as we, as, as I've mentioned before, grid mod modernization is another area which needs to happen in the future, and the government is investing. Hopefully, we will be getting uh, the, the return uh, from that in the coming days. Next slide, please. If you look at the financing uh, um, the picture, we'll see that uh, roughly 2.3 million euro has been disbursed in, in, the, in the April to June quarter 2022. And most of this had gone for refinancing uh, solar uh, or, or, or green factories, particularly garments factories, uh, which also partially includes uh, rooftop solar as well. Uh, according to the central bank directives, uh, at least 5% of the loans have to, be, have to be deployed for green loans. However, uh, roughly 4% on average have been deployed uh, so the financial institutions are unable to have been unable to uh, deploy that fund due to certain regions, reasons, uh, one being uh, lack of capacity. Uh, in terms of the limit, the central bank has set aside Euro 3.7 billion for financing uh, green and sustainable projects. The biggest challenge will be to ensure deployment of this fund. Uh, the refinancing scheme allows incentivizes the commercial banks to deploy the fund at the rate at, at the rate of 5.5 percent interest rate which is later refinanced by the central bank at 3%. Uh, in terms of the challenges, there are two major challenges. One part is for uh, OPEX-based, uh, CAPEX-based uh, investments, which are happening, particularly because there is no transaction happening because the benefit that is accrued to the factory is in terms of lower cost of electricity bills. For OPEX-based uh, investments, there is a transfer of payment which is going on between the investor and the factory which can be better assessed by the financial institutions. ITCOL is there, which is a government-owned NBFI, which is quite hands-on in this investment, but there are scope for other commercial banks to, to get a grasp a better understanding of the ecosystem and, and become more attuned to investing for rooftop solar. Next slide, please. Uh, another major challenge that we came across based on our discussion from the FIs, where the, where the cap uh, in terms of loan, 
uh, the cap that is currently there is is uh, inadequate or it can probably uh, cover a, a power plant uh, to the tune of two megawatt at the at the best so there might be an opportunity to increase the the lending cap on the part of the central bank which would facilitate uh, installation of so rooftop solar plants uh, if we summarize the key challenges uh, we'll see that uh, macroeconomic risk is a huge challenge in the context of bangladesh given the fact that importing of equipment is becoming a challenge since we have to depend on chinese uh, imported solar panels uh, import is uh, becoming a huge challenge uh, although a few companies have tried to set up including one being rahima pros have tried to set up uh, for, uh, a solar based uh, solar uh, solar panel plant however due to covid and and uh, undue challenges from the chinese competitors they have been unable to continue operations uh, in terms of permit risk uh, as I've mentioned before, acquisition of land is a huge problem, particularly for solar parks, uh, which needs to be streamlined and government's direct support is required with the procurement process and a low availability of land. As we know, the density of our of the country is very high. It's difficult to find non-agriculture land, uh, so which is uh, also a major problem. In terms of the market risk, uh, we also find out that uh, there are certain costs in terms of uh, cost of installation and and the existing subsidies that are being provided uh, for fossil fuel like petrol and others are also one of the hindrances for promoting renewable energy uh, in bangladesh in terms of political risk uh, the government is uh, uh, the government is uh, duty bound to support the the renewable energy sector and and the policies and the efforts are in place to to facilitate growth of renewable energy in bangladesh and uh, and in terms of the financial risk, just as I've mentioned, uh, the central bank has a refinancing scheme, but the fund is probably not being deployed properly due to certain systemic challenges, which needs to be addressed in order to streamline the process, which includes training the banks, commercial banks, which are uh, which are deploying the fund, uh, capacity development into that end, and also uh, certain policy advocacy is required to increase the 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 lending cap, which would enable growth of. Uh, of a higher capacity rooftop solar facility. So I'll stop there and hand over the floor to Matthias. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Zed. Uh, lots of information and I already noted a few items uh, which I think there will be an, an opportunity also for Dutch companies uh, to uh, to interact uh, both in terms of, of trade as well as investments. Um, for now, I would like to briefly tell you a bit about the Dutch landscape uh, of uh, parties active and stakeholders active in the uh, solar energy uh, sector. So, um, uh, shortly on, on the Dutch market, uh, uh, I would say during the past decade, the Netherlands really emerged as, as a leading player in terms of solar energy. Uh, and nowadays, we are the third largest uh, country in the European Union in terms of installed PV capacity, which is behind uh, Spain and Poland. Uh, I think this is a result of, of a number of, uh, of, of drivers. Uh, first of all, it was the, the government uh, which was uh, providing a uh, large number of subsidies, allowing um, um, both consumers as well as uh, commercial parties to invest in, uh, in solar capacity. Uh, but we also home to a number of, uh, of, of strong research institutes uh, and the combination of the ecosystem between private sector uh, universities um, and, and government stakeholders allowed uh, uh, the Netherlands to emerge as, as one of the leading players in terms of innovations, uh, particularly in, in terms of high quality uh, new innovations, combinations uh, uh, where we could integrate PV solutions in, uh, in, in other industries. Um, so during the past decade, uh, this, this industry has been uh, developing rapidly and also if we look to the next five years here and uh, expected uh, plus, uh, plus 10 percent growth of the industry is is, uh, is forecast um uh, another figure here we are also uh current the second largest uh country in terms of uh, of capacity and just behind um really i recall uh, in terms of uh, uh, per capita and generate solar power so um if we, if we look to the landscape, as already mentioned, huh, in, in the Netherlands, it's an ecosystem uh, by, by private sector uh, parties, but also universities and governments closely interacting and allowing for, for developments in terms of high quality and high yielding energy efficiency solutions. Uh, as already mentioned by Boss, but also by Zahat, uh, uh, the Netherlands simply cannot compete with Asian suppliers of particularly panels such as the Chinese. 
And so that, that uh, provided us a, a route towards uh, more high quality and niche uh, solutions. And if we look to the landscape and the needs and opportunities in Bardis, and we also highlight a few of those uh, where we see that there could be an interaction between Dutch solutions and, um, and Bangladeshi parties, um, particularly where we could combine also uh, the financing needs. Uh, as I had already mentioned that, that at current, there's a lack of understanding, particularly among banks, uh, but um, there's also uh, a, a, a lack of availability of land. So well, there we could uh, identify uh, niche solutions where the Dutch could really uh, offer their uh, advantages. Um, so um, again, uh, the Dutch being home to a number of private sector uh, players, and we, in our re report, uh, we highlighted five uh, niche uh, solutions where we think uh, the Dutch could really provide uh, added value to, to Bangladesh in order to, to uh, facilitate the energy transition. Um, and, and those five are uh, solutions in, uh, where uh, we have digital transformations um, combined with, uh, with PV, uh, uh, but the Netherlands also being very strong in, uh, in, in EV solutions. Uh, uh, well, I was in Bangladesh last week. I do not recall that I saw many um, EV calls at this, uh, this moment, uh, but it might be something uh, for the years ahead. Uh, where we do see a lot of opportunities is particularly in, in EV in combination with so, uh, cold storage. Uh, particularly in remote uh, off-grid uh, regions. Um, the Netherlands having a, a substantial horticulture sector has also developed various solutions where we have the combination of solar and, and the horticulture. Um, uh, and finally, um, we do think that there are interesting options for, uh, for rooftop panels, uh, particularly where the Dutch could bring in also their financing solutions. So we would like to elaborate a bit more on a few of those. We go to the next slide. So as, as I had already mentioned, uh, the, the Bangladeshi government has also its policy uh, to, uh, to, particularly also for private sector parties, uh, that they enforce uh, some certain amount of, of root up uh, PV. Um, there, there are a number of, uh, of parties already engaging in this, uh, but we do think that, uh, particularly given the lack of land in Bangladesh, this could be an interesting uh, option to further increase uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the PV uh, uh, generation in Bangladesh. And, and it does have a, a, a lot of experience in this field. Uh, again, particularly if we could also con combine this with, with uh, financing solutions, uh, we do think that there uh, are interesting opportunities for Dutch parties. What we, what we noticed during our research is that uh, in order to compete, let's say, with Asian peers, uh, we have to position ourselves, uh, particularly in a combination of, uh, uh, of course, uh, integrated solutions, but also technical assistance, preferably uh, uh, providing also the financing. And this would really... Uh, uh, given uh, competitive advantages towards uh, Asian peers. So uh, that is one of the, uh, the angles we, uh, we think we would like to highlight and also for the Dutch government uh, uh, for, for future engagements. Um, the second one is in terms of uh, cold storage. Uh, so uh, uh, Bangladesh has a uh, quite a extensive uh, grid connections nowadays, but there's still off-grid uh, regions yeah, where there are uh, energy needs, for example, uh, in, in, in agri-food processing, uh, but you could also think about more critical uh, processes such as uh, pharmaceuticals and medical, uh, where um, there are uh, off-grid locations, uh, which could be uh, fueled by, by solar solutions. Uh, in this case, also replacing, for a large extent, the, uh, uh, the power generated by diesel generators. Um, which is nowadays uh, by uh, the increased uh, price of fuel is also skyrocketing the uh, the price of these generators and the OPEX uh, costs. So um, particularly for the industrial segment, uh, we do think that, that the Dutch could there uh, provide integrated solutions for, for example, food processing, uh, pharmaceutical uh, or medical industries. So these are two examples uh, where we would say that the Dutch could really position themselves as unique service suppliers uh, for, for Bangladeshi stakeholders. If we go to the next slide. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, we would like, really like to give the floor to our two guest speakers. 
So um, we are glad that we have uh, two leading uh, speakers from the Bangladeshi markets amongst us this morning. And I firstly would like to give the floor to uh, Amunua Mishba Moy, who is the Managing Director of Rima Fruz Renewable Energy. Uh, and Mr. Munawa would like to uh, share some views, uh, particularly with respect to the uh, private sector uh, developments and opportunities, and, and also where the Dutch groups uh, uh, interact and, and increasingly uh, uh, become partners for Bangladeshi stakeholders, uh, both in, in terms of trade as investments. So, Mr. Munawa, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, thanks to the Dutch Embassy and Light Castle. Uh, for the invitation. Uh, I think the report and the assessment is uh, very much spot on uh, and uh, where the shifts and possible opportunities are in terms of solar. So as you can see uh, that uh, almost till 20, if you look at the trend uh, between the off-grid and the on-grid, you know, till 2015, Bangladesh was the significantly off-grid market. Uh, and then slowly it started, uh, you know, uh, with the lead certification and all that towards on-grid systems. And then net metering sort of started spiraling the uh, on-grid uh, demands. So the market has moved from watt peak to kilowatts and megawatts. That's, that's the whole transition over the last uh, five, five, seven years. So, uh, so what we are seeing and what we'll continue to see at least in the next three to five years is this uh, significant adaptation of solar, especially for rooftop because of the net metering advantage, whether you call it CAPEX or OPEX. Of course, it is more CAPEX today and less OPEX because uh, I think the, op uh, the OPEX is a matter of getting the right investors and uh, you know financiers in. So uh, there are a few companies, but uh, uh, I think it, 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 such sort of investors and financiers are still not uh, ready locally and very few are coming from abroad. And that is one area where perhaps Dutch investors can, uh, you know, uh, look into it uh, to sort of, uh, uh, you know, come in, take the early move, movers advantage and then, you know, uh, scale it up. So, so rooftop definitely uh, at the moment is uh, key uh, is is the growth uh, is the growth sector and uh, the Bangladesh Bank Green Transformation Fund uh, is a good one the one which they sort of revised and uh, updated from December uh, I believe twenty two uh, onwards uh, it, it's and but. But the banks are yet to uh, catch up and figure out because I think the problem is uh, this whole mindset of having to have security all the time, you know. And what we are trying to encourage the banks is to focus on project financing, you know. If the project by itself is feasible, it can generate the additional savings of the cash flow that itself should. And our numbers uh, show that uh, it should be feasible to finance. I think it's a matter of time, maybe the next uh, five, six, nine months, we shall start seeing uh, some, uh, some traction. Because from a debt financing point of view, it, it really does not make sense to bring in dollars, at least for rooftop. You know, it does not because the savings are all in uh, mostly in Taka. Perhaps it only makes sense for the garments industry per se, because they have dollar revenue, other for all the other local industry uh, Taka debt financing makes uh, much more sense. Uh, uh, IPPs, yes, uh, that's another big area, but you know, uh, not the most fast moving one. Uh, uh, the land acquisition is definitely an issue. And the IPP uh, process, uh, I think that needs a bit more consolidation and, uh, and fine tuning so that it does not take the usual time that is it has been taking uh, so far. So there is a significant need to make the process much more plug and play for investors to actually jump into it. So we still have concerns at the IPP level in terms of scaling it up, but some has to be done. Few gigawatts of uh, solar parks has to happen uh, because everything cannot happen with the uh, rooftops. 
uh, the other key area which has been appropriately highlighted uh, in the presentation is actually the productive use of renewable energy uh, and the distributed renewable energy, you know, whether it is for coal storage, whether it is for, uh, you know, uh, EV mobility through charging, uh, um, you know, it could be mill chillers, uh, irrigation pumps is another, uh, you know, another one and so on. So. So the whole uh, innovation comes in uh, with renewable energy is whoever can come up with a solution uh, that can directly link the use of renewable energy to productive use. And rural Bangladesh is the prime, prime, prime market for that. Because the whole idea is to focus at agriculture, livestock, fisheries, you know, all the sectors which are viable in rural Bangladesh. Uh, and figure out, you know, what are the solar-based uh, uh, productive solutions uh, that can actually significantly uh, add value. And of course, uh, in, in, along with technology, the, 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 the right type of financing for that has to happen. And from our past experience, whether you look at, you know, uh, irrigation pumps or even home systems, you know, 15, 18 years back, People didn't believe in home systems. People didn't believe in irrigation pumps. So initial demonstration is very, very key. Initial demonstration is extremely key for people to believe. The good thing about rural Bangladesh is that I think compared to urban side of the country is that rural people understand solar really, really works. They have seen it in their homes. They have seen it in the irrigation pumps, right? So, so they know it, it, it actually works. And uh, one of the biggest area where we think solar will come is actually in the three wheel uh, electric vehicle uh, charging population, because it's massive. It consumes almost uh, over two gigawatts of electricity daily. So we believe that it will start with solar hybrid charging stations and then eventually move into a much larger possible. And again, that gets connected to energy storage through battery, right? So you will have battery lease, battery swapping uh, with connected apps. So all those possibilities are significant. And rural Bangladesh is the prime, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, a place uh, to see this sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, explored. So it's the initial, uh, you know, first, first movers who, who has to go in and, and, you know, really demonstrate and, and come. So few people are doing it. Uh, as a company, we are also piloting some of these uh, things and, and see where it goes. But we believe that productive use, including uh, charging, cold storage, milk chillers, and so on, uh, has significant uh, uh, opportunity. And that's where uh, I suppose technology is where the Dutch companies perhaps uh, can uh, come in. And financing, of course, will continue to remain uh, a challenge each time a solution. Uh, will get introduced. As, as usual, it takes some time for people to really sink in, understand. Uh, some will happen faster. In case of electric charging and all that, I think it will happen faster. But cold storage, milk chiller, um, irrigation, all that perhaps will take a little bit of time, but uh, it will uh, definitely happen. Policy level, a lot of work taking place. I know the member of the SEDA is here. Uh, but uh, I, I, I believe uh, 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 what we are seeing for the private sector is more concrete roadmap, more concrete roadmap uh, in terms of uh, targets, specific targets, not only about just saying gigawatts. Uh, uh, we need to be able to be very specific, uh, you know, uh, on the grid, uh, distributed, productive use, budgets, timeline. So that's what we are seeing from the private sector that we need more interventions uh, in that aspect. So that would be my sort of input so far for the session. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Munawar. Um, I noted you. down a number of, uh, of, of uh, elements you mentioned yeah, as, as uh, opportunities to move forward to the industry in Bangladesh. Um, we'll come back to you later on. Huh? We have also a number of uh, questions received via the chat. And I also urge everyone huh, to uh, to put in your questions uh, via chat function, and we will have some time at the end of this uh, presentation also to address these. 
Uh, thank you, Minister uh, Munawa. I would like to um, go over to our next speaker. So uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Fasul Hawk, uh, who is the uh, Director uh, at the Sustainable Renewable Energy Development Authority of Bangladesh. Um, and he would uh, share some uh, views with respect to the uh, upcoming policy developments and legislation in uh, the country. So, uh, Mr. Hawk, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Yes. Uh, Leo from First Secretary at Embassy of Kingdom of the Netherlands, Dhaka. I, uh, again, uh, Director Larry International, Matthew Brainen and Jahidul Amin, Director of Light Castle Partners, and finally, Monwar Mizna Moin, Managing Director of Rohingya of Renewable Energy. <clears throat> uh, I have, uh, you have a very good presentation on Bangladesh perspective and also for Dutch perspective regarding renewable energy, specifically for solar area. Regarding policy and legislation perspective, I can uh, raise or I can, give you some impression. For solar and wind, if we, uh, you know, Bangladesh perspective, uh, so contribution of solar at this moment, renewable energy is uh, nearly more than 75. And wind, hydro and others, you have seen already from the first presentation from Jahidul Amin, you, know, you got that information. Renewable energy policy at first formulated in 2008, after 15 years later, we have initiated uh, to reformulate, uh, not reformulate, just formulated a new policy that is renewable policy of Bangladesh that will be 2020-2013. It is in under processing. First stakeholder meeting, second stakeholder meeting, and also uh, workshop is already done. And now this policy will, uh, within a few days, will kick off, will be, sent to the inter-ministerial meeting. Hopefully within this uh, financial year, I mean 30 June, it will be uh, passed by the uh, by our parliament. Yeah, I agree with some issues of Mono or Ms. Uh, very good, uh, very good point regarding productive use of uh, RE and distributed use of RE, budgeting, more intervention and strategic and specific actions. Yes, definitely all those are very crucial things, not only for uh, policy implication. Yes, uh, we have target, you know, we have target 30% for 20, 2030 and also 40 by 2041, according to the government commitment. But this renewable policy will specify some specific issue. Uh, if we just mention some things, uh, regarding renewable energy policy. Earlier 2008 renewable policy focused only seven important things. I mean, that is uh, if we exclude objectives, that means five or six important things. But now renewable policy will en encompasses uh, almost 18 uh, specific area, uh, including new, there are almost 13, 12 new area will cover it is licensing, investment, carbon trading, uh, research and development, capacity buildup, quality assurance, all things, uh, financing, all these things are uh, included here. Hopefully, uh, when it is placed on the interministerial uh, uh, meeting, then it will be more concise and that it will be helpful for Bangladeshi and also other foreign investors regarding renewable energy policy. And another important policy is we will strive for um, uh, net metering for rooftop solar. You know, in Bangladesh, there are so many projections, so many research on rooftop solar or pro, uh, potentiality of uh, solar. One important thing is needed for uh, potential of wind and potential of solar mapping. Uh, potential of wind, uh, it is in under processing in, uh, in our country. We submitted to the power division. Now we got some information, it will be updated. Because you know, CIRAD, Sustainable and Renewable Energy Development Authority, is a regulatory agency and a uh, nodal agency. That is why our task is to formulate uh, policy and also regulatory uh, monitoring and also regulatory activities. We are doing all those activities with the streamline of the government policies. That is the as a uh, as an important organization, especially specifically for sustainable and a renewable energy development authority. <clears throat> for example, solar, if we consider solar, uh, then 
uh, we'll, we'll come to the OIN specifically. Uh, we see that Bangladesh is a very good uh, location, you know, uh, 20 degree 34 minute and uh, uh, 26 to 38 north latitude and 88 degree one minute to 90 to 40 east longitude. So Bangladesh is a semi-tropical country. 70% of the sunlight is available throughout the year. So four to six hour sun use PV technology receives average solar radiation uh, per kilowatt hour meter square per day, it is 4.5. So it is very good for uh, uh, renewable energy, specifically for solar. And there are uh, there are lots of opportunities, opportunities public building, railways, uh, street, and also private sector building, RMG. There are lots of uh, open spaces also there. So we can um, we can promote our renewable energy through, through net metering. No uh, project is not risk free. Every project uh, will it, uh, success of every project or uh, every work is depends on the how we can handle with the risk. So financial definitely, I also agree with with uh, Jahidul Amin and also Manohar Mizba for Bangladesh case. Financing financing is a very uh, crucial issue for Bangladesh, but you know, from Bangladesh perspective, Bangladesh government has taken some very good initiative in 2020, uh, 2020. The sustainable green under uh, green policy, Bangladesh Bank has uh, in, uh, uh, instituted green products initiative and also green transformation fund, technological development fund. You know, 50, 39 commercial banks and 50, 25 financial institutions they have signed with the Bangladesh Bank Sustainable Development Department, that means Bangladesh Bank, to channel out those money for the customer, for the investors, uh, industrialist, because these are crucial thing. Besides this, uh, it call infrastructure development company and also BIFFL, Bangladesh Infrastructure Finance <coughs> Limited. They also provide some loan, uh, loan to the those who are interested. Uh, I mean industrialist consumers or any other stakeholders or any of those any of our entrepreneurship they can provide us alone so international organization they also come with health opportunity if we uh, recently see that we have bangladesh up to 2022 if we consider 2016 to 22 6.7 billion national and international sources of fund specifically for re sector has come uh, we have to materialize all those issues. Uh, so people are very much uh, eager to find out uh, how can we solve this because Bangladesh Bank has come, other commercial institutions, uh, financial institutions also come, uh, scheduled bank is also come. So international organization, they, will, they has come. So I think that it can overcome, we can overcome some hurdle regarding financial issues. Issue. If we consider, uh, wind potentiality of wind uh, maybe you have uh, known about nrl national renewable energy laboratory so many organization institution and also bangladesh uh, also bangladesh government maybe uh, yeah, power development board and also other organization they also survey for wind uh, potential potential of wind that is why sreda is at present doing on uh, onshore wind mapping, how to find out the potentiality of wind, because Bangladesh has huge potential regarding the NRL report. If we consider 5.75 to 6.75 average speed of Bangladesh uh, coastal area, then according to their report, uh, in wind, it is 30,000 megawatt potentiality of wind. Solar, there are some organizations, they also, uh, they also provide some other ambitious plan. That is why government is also, uh, also framed a plan regarding wind and also uh, solar. In this, in this uh, perspective, not only renewable energy policy will, uh, a new renewable energy policy is formulated. Net metering guideline is also reviewed with keen observation, uh, with, uh, we have communicated with other stakeholder utilities, so it will be updated in future, uh, in near future, uh, not at this moment, maybe in near future. We are working on that issues also, because, uh, you know, Bangladesh has a 
fuel mix. If we consider 40% of our uh, power capacity from the renewable energy by 2041, Bangladesh has has to renewable energy sector. That means uh, renewable energy capacity has to be upgraded. But another important thing is not only solar and wind. We have to integrate the energy efficiency and so conservation plan with the uh, solar wind or renewable energy plan. If these are integrated, then supply demand side, energy auditing side, energy efficiency side, energy conservation side. So all will come through and make a very good result for Bangladesh. I think uh, regarding energy efficiency and conservation, there are, we have, SRADA has uh, framed so many policies uh, that is a different thing. And regarding this uh, renewable energy part, it will make, we are working now a renewable energy policy. And we are also working on solar energy roadmap uh, for Bangladesh that is, so it will it will uh, give a very good opportunity and it will open a very good window for the investors, industrialists, and also entrepreneurship entrepreneurs, those who are interested uh, in renewable energy. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Hogg, for sharing your uh, views. And um, we'll come back to later on you uh, with further questions from the audience. Speaking about the audience, I would like to ask everyone also to share their, uh, their questions via the chat function. Thank you. And we already received a number of interesting questions. And um, I have one for um, um, actually uh, for Bas Blau. Um, Bas, uh, um, Mr. Hoek uh, already expressed uh, that uh, the Bangladeshi government is working on new policies, uh, which will also further pave the way for foreign investors. Um, from your perspective, uh, on, on a G2G level, what would be uh, what would be the position of the Dutch government uh, in order to um, further facilitate the um, uh, the opportunities for, in this case, Dutch companies uh, to further strengthen the position in Bangladesh in terms of trade and investment? Bas, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, I think there's, there's multiple ways to go about it. Um, uh, on the one hand, as I also referenced in the beginning, uh, we can, of course, look at, look at and talk about uh, the regulatory environment, uh, but that's not something that we completely control. Um, what we've done in other sectors that has worked quite well is to set up an activity, uh, work with, for example, demonstrations, uh, see if we can, can incentivize Dutch companies to take a couple of hurdles, uh, work on improving the value chain in a particular area, uh, and, and in that way, um, um, see if we can familiarize them with the market. Uh, that's an iterative process. So that's also a process in which uh, they will learn, they will see what's happening in the market and, and what's possible. And that will give us um, sort of the field that we need to also have this conversation ongoing with the government. I think um, in general in Bangladesh, and, and these policies have briefly been touched upon already, of course, um, um, everything's pointing in the right direction. There's a couple of incentives that, uh, that are promising. Um, and it's up to us to be sure that we uh, we have them clear that we can communicate those effectively also for companies that, uh, that are willing to enter the market outside of the scope of possible activities. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Bas. Uh, you mentioned hey, that one of the opportunities is also to uh, introduce Dutch technologies via establishing pilot projects. If I may ask uh, to um, uh, Mr. Uh, Munawar, um, uh, you, you mentioned uh, a couple of things yeah, which are relevant in order to uh, boost the industry. Yeah? Um, if, if we might be in the position to establish a, a couple of uh, uh, pilot projects and uh, demonstrations in Bangladesh uh, by uh, showcasing Dutch technologies and innovations, could you maybe point out two of those uh, which you would like to prioritize? So uh, um, what would be, uh, uh, which, which innovations uh, would you like to introduce in Bangladesh uh, which might be uh, fostering uh, future uh, development of the industry, Mr. Noah. Uh, thanks, Mathis. Uh, I'll take from the presentation, I'll focus on two. <clears throat> uh, one is the cold storage, you know, uh, and the other one would be the EV charging stations uh, using uh, some sort of uh, battery lease uh, on, a, on a connected uh, plat uh, app uh, platform, you know. 
So that these two would be uh, very good uh, uh, innovative products and solutions and services to bring into this market, uh, which has a mix of you know energy and direct uh, productive use uh, capability, uh, and and then of course the challenges of you know eventually financing how it will get into play. Also, these two I would definitely recommend. Excellent, thank you. Um, again, you, you mentioned financing, and this was also uh, so. So, uh, so of course, the financing challenge is okay. When you tell, let's say, you go to a bank, right, and they understand how to finance a diesel generator, but the moment you say solar cold storage, they got two hundred things to, you know, uh, they can't mm-hmm. figure out. You tell them that, you know, I want to do battery lease, let's say a solid state battery or a lithium ion battery, right? And it, it, it's an it's a energy generating product, right? And it can generate revenue by itself by leasing and charging. But then again, you understand a diesel or a petrol generator, but then you wouldn't understand a battery that stores the energy from solar and then, uh, you know, delivers energy. And so uh, these are the di- these are the initial, uh, what do you call it, dichotomy or, uh, you know, gap in understanding. And uh, so how do you make uh, such a revenue generating new technology, productive asset, financed, you know, and how do you, and, and, and monetize it, you monetize it and, and, and give them some sort of, uh, you know, tracking system where they can, you know, really see it happen. Uh, on a day-to-day basis. So yeah, those initial challenges because it's something new, new way of doing it, you know, uh, uh, typical of any new product and solution that, you know, uh, when you introduce, you know, those questions that is there. So, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Munawaha. You once more addressed that, the fact that the, the financial industry in Bangladesh should be, let's say, uh, further strengthened uh, in terms of um, technical understanding of the uh, new innovations. Um, it was also mentioned by uh, Mr. Hoke uh, that there recently have been many initiatives already uh, by the uh, Bangladeshi government in, in terms of strengthening the, uh, the financial sector and uh, provide in, uh, incentives uh, for further boosting investments. Yeah, um, of course, the Netherlands has, is home also to a strong financial uh, industry, um, both uh, banks, but also um, international finance institutes, uh, such as FMO, which is uh, uh, very dominant also in, uh, in Bangladesh. Um, Mr. Hoke, uh, if you look to the financial sector, huh, um, what would you like to, uh, to address to the Dutch? Huh? Where could we interact? Huh? Which, which uh, activities should we deploy? In Bangladesh, also to strengthen the financial industry uh, in uh, in Bangladesh. Thank you. Sorry, please. Uh, again, your question. I could not. Uh, my inter internet is interrupted here. I cannot clearly hear you. Please. Okay. Again. Yeah, my question is: uh, Your uh, government has recently, uh, uh, in, in, let's say, initiated various initiatives. Uh, to further strengthen the financial capabilities uh, to, uh, for financing of renewable energies in Bangladesh, uh, including a number of, uh, of incentives. Um, yeah, um, but what I hear from the various speakers, but it's also coming from the questions from the chat, uh, is that there's still a gap yeah, in terms of uh, what the financial services sector should offer in Bangladesh uh, to further uh, facilitate investments in, in solar energy. So um, given the fact that the Netherlands uh, is, is home to a strong financial industry, uh, both banks as well as uh, international finance institutes, what would be your uh, recommendation? Uh, how could we um, leverage the capabilities from the Dutch financial sector in Bangladesh? So what is needed to further strengthen the financial services sector in Bangladesh? Okay, thank you. Uh... My point is earlier I mentioned, uh, maybe you recollect, uh, all are recollect here, including Bangladesh Bank, 39 commercial bank and 25 financial institutions. Uh, they provide money. But one thing is that uh, uh, we have to work all together. We have to work and also have access uh, how to channel out this money. Sreda, 
last 28th uh, February formed a committee just to accelerate or to promote uh, what, how can uh, easy access to this, to this money. There are in the industrial list and also uh, very, uh, I think, entrepreneur uh, in renewable energy and also some uh, commercial banks and also financial institutions. Many people do not know about the access of this uh, money because its interest is low. Bangladesh Bank, earlier I mentioned six to eight categories they provide loan uh, nowadays. So it's a great opportunity for them. They, that is why at this moment, uh, Sreda can take some information because uh, in Sreda, maybe you have known National Solar Help Desk is here. We can get all kinds of information. Uh, those who are those who seek information, how uh, solar rooftop or solar irrigation or any other uh, information regarding solar, uh, they can get from this National Solar Help Desk. Some financial information is also uh, they have needed because of investment. In if in financial investment definitely is a, a very crucial thing. That is why we uh, we formed a committee and to make it easy to the uh, to the person, individual, industrialist, or anyone, so that money is there, interest is this much. These these are conditions so people can easily access that and SEDA can play a supportive role in this regard. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Munawai, you also would like to respond? Uh, yes, I think the multiple things, right? First is, how do we get our financial institution to come out of this conventional mindset of having to take security for everything, you know? But they want additional security uh, beyond the project, and that's a stumbling block for, uh, you know, uh, this sort of project which generates its own efficiency and its own uh, additional surplus fund and over a period of time it, it makes it sustainable so i think how do you make the financial institutions comfortable with that uh, model financial model uh, do we do some initial uh, risk taking uh, insurance scheme or not i don't know means so they have to get into this mindset of project financing on and not uh, capital financing with additional security and all that stuff. So that's number one. Number two, uh, Dutch investors can definitely come into places like uh, OPEX, uh, you know, uh, OPEX model, lease model. They can uh, come in and do the initial uh, investment with a, you know, joint venture or local partner and things like that. And then slowly uh, build a market where local debt financing can also eventually come in and they can, of course, exit through IPOs, buybacks and things like that. And number three would be uh, sort of a startup pilot, the startups, investing in startups, right? The startups could be for um, all these last mile productive use uh, solutions, you know, whether it is uh, electric vehicle charging or, uh, you know, uh, cold storage, milk chillers, whatever. So those sort of startup uh, investments uh, would actually make sense. Thank you. Excellent, interesting. And um, Zahed, I also have a question for you huh? because uh, Mr. Munawar mentioned also the uh, the startups uh, uh, industry in in Bangladesh. I know that Lightcastle, huh? you're also pretty strong in the uh, in, in the startup business. Uh, could you share your thoughts a bit on? Uh, do you see any uh, developments in this? Where huh? any? Any uh, any networks which are relevant, any, any new initiatives say, in order to fuel uh, financing for startups? So that's floor is yours. I think Sahet is not able to answer the question now. Let me park this uh, the question for now and go over to the next one. So uh, one more question uh, I have also for Mr. Munawa. Uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, you pinpointed a few opportunities. Uh, I would like to uh, ask you, do you have any insights in, in what are best practices uh, in, in terms of uh, solar uh, fostering uh, for the boosting the solar uh, energy market from other countries in South or Southeast Asia? Do you see any 
And the country say, well, that is really a leading market. And when we talk about um, uh, uh, PV, and uh, this could be a model which we might also uh, adapt in Bangladesh. Uh, so, of course, uh, I think India is definitely a, a significant, uh, I mean, if you look at the sort of way they escalated uh, the whole renewable energy overall, but then also solar, and, and they have very distinct track. Uh, from urban on-grid solutions to distributed uh, rural solutions, you know, productive use, social uh, impacts, and things like that. So, so, so definitely, India is at at a, at a much larger scale, but still, I think uh, it, it is something that we can definitely relate to. Uh, so, we need uh, definitely that sort of focus, uh, budgeting, attention, and. Uh, so that's one example. And in terms of specific to IPPs, if you talk about grid connected, I think there is even uh, 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 much more countries. It could be even Malaysia, Thailand, you know, uh, India, they all have successfully, much more successfully executed IPP models than Bangladesh. And we have a lot of things to be able to adapt. Like for one simple example, please, one of the things that we have been proposing is, you know, a tariff should not be negotiated. Tariff should be declared, you know. Tariff should be declared, let's say, for a period of six months with certain uh, requirements and criteria. And whoever meets that requirement and criteria and feels the tariff is feasible, bids and gets done with it. You know, so that's one simple uh, approach that uh, we had talked about. Number two, we said that as government develops a lot of things, it should selectively develop solar parks. You know, because uh, buying lands, developing them, it's it's hugely time consuming. You know. So, uh, so if the if government takes the initiative of developing and having solar parks ready, like any industrial zones or anything like that, you know, it, it could be like, you know, uh, five of them each with 100, 200 megawatt possibilities. So that also will significantly uh, help. To, and on top of on top of land, it even can be the water bodies, right? Depending uh, what we heard at the beginning of the session. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, so I see Zahed is uh, still in our call and uh, also raised his hand. Zahed, I, um, I mentioned that uh, uh, yeah, in the light castle, you have quite some expertise in the startup uh, scene in Bangladesh, which was also mentioned by Mr. Manoir as one of the opportunities in the financial services sector to address. Uh, could you perhaps highlight a bit on, on your perspective uh, how the, the startup scheme could could also contribute to further boosting the solar energy industry in Bangladesh, Sahat? Yeah, definitely, uh, Matthias. Uh, I think um, uh, just as uh, Mr. Manor has uh, mentioned, uh, there, there is significant potential for, for startups to invest in this segment. Uh, unfortunately, we are still at a very nascent stage. I could only think of one uh, one startup which is doing very very well, SolShare. We also happen to interview them during the research process, uh, so they are all working directly in the in the three wheeler uh, EV, EV market space uh, where they are offering uh, renewable energy sources for these three wheelers. Uh, so based on our understanding, we believe that uh, we need to actually work on the system in order to encourage more young entrepreneurs to come to this segment, uh, particularly given the fact that it's going to feature very heavily in our uh, national strategy moving towards renewable energy. So uh, while there are uh, different accelerator programs going on uh, across uh, multiple areas, for example, for agri-tech and other areas, this might uh, make sense for us to think of a, of a separate incubation or accelerator programs, which would cater predominantly for renewable energy-based startups. So one part would be to, to increase the awareness level uh, among uh, young entrepreneurs so that they are more interested about uh, investing in this area or venturing foraying in this area. That would be one area. Second part would be to incubate them so that they are given the hand-holding support. And the third part would, of course, be uh, access to impact funds and to some extent commercial venture capital firms, funds as well in order uh, to test out some of these business models, which might also be relevant for these uh, for, for our uh, sustainable growth. Thank you, Matthias. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Zahed. And I see in the chat uh, various questions also related to ransom technicalities uh, which I, I believe are also mostly addressed in our report huh? so this will come online shortly uh, it was mentioned also by the Netherlands Enterprise Agency that the report will be published on our website so uh, for example uh, questions on taxation and, uh, um, and, uh, and tariffs I think these will also be included in, uh, in the report so um, um, 
this, uh, this will be published shortly. Um, if we do not have any further remaining questions, then uh, um, I would like to give the floor once more maybe to Bas Blau to do some closing remarks. Thanks, Matthias. I was actually gonna 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 make a remark still, uh, but I'll I'll combine it. Um, no, I'm, I'm very happy to hear the discussion. Um, very excited also to hear about a lot of of new sectors, new opportunities, new ways of approaching uh, approaching solar um, and the energy uh, challenge in particular. But I also wanted to underline that uh, that of course uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. In many in many ways, um, um, we have a lot of programs already in agriculture where we see potential for you know integrating some of the solutions that we haven't been able to design yet or, or to to put in those activities yet. Um, of course, we're not the only ones. Other partners, partners also uh, work on these kinds of things. And I think, I think for us, the biggest shift uh, as the Netherlands is really started starting to think about how can you, you know, put this on on the market commercially, uh, and what is our role in in doing so. Um, so I'm I'm very grateful for all the ideas that we've heard today. Some of them, um, I think, in particular, uh, deserve deserve some some closer consideration. Um, so I'm, I'm also happy to, to see this as a starting point of a, of a dialogue that we'll have with you uh, on the way forward. Um, I think that yeah, the next step for us now is to uh, <clears throat> make sure that the, the, the study is, is posted online um, and that we can see how we can, uh, yeah, we can reflect a bit on this discussion and ways to, to follow it up concretely. I think, uh, I think seeing is believing. So seeing, see, yeah, seeing if we can get to some mode or another of demonstrating Dutch technology in Bangladesh, uh, I think will be, uh, at the core of our thinking on the way forward. Um, and with that, I think, um, um, yeah, I wanted to thank you all for, for being here, for spending your time with us and um, hope to continue the conversation very soon. Excellent, Bas. And uh, yeah, definitely, yeah, we would like to contribute also to um, introducing Dutch innovations in Bardes, for example, via pilots, uh, uh, a few things, and I don't wanna, Repeat uh, once more, but I think hey, you pinpointed circle storage and every food, uh, also by the other speakers, uh, and also Mr. Munua, hey, you mentioned uh, e vehicles as a, uh, a clear opportunity, particularly in remote uh, areas. Uh, furthermore, was addressed uh, the, the, the needs and also the opportunities uh, to uh, intervene in the, uh, the financial services industry. And uh, that's where Dutch could uh, also contribute uh, uh, moreover in, in technical systems, but also introducing new financial models. Uh, for OPEX and these and, and, and the startup scene. Um, thank you all for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, in case you would have any further questions, uh, please reach out to us, either Lightcastle or Reef. Um, and and uh, we do envision that the uh, the report will be published at the website of Netherlands Enterprise AC within the coming weeks. Uh, and we, uh, yeah, we, we wish to remain also in contact with you in order to assess uh, what kind of opportunity we could further materialize in the um, renewable energy industry in, in Bangladesh. Thank you all for your time today. On behalf of Larif and Lightcastle, um, see you next time. <laughs>